I want to salute you, homie, you know, for, for building your own thing and doing your own thing, creating your own platform, your own website. I got one life to live out my dreams, and I'm giving this thing all I got. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I represent the culture. All right now you're turning up on MrTalaferro.com, shawty. Yeah! Alfred Talaferro, Mr. Talaferro TV. I got an icon in the building. Icon alert. Um, he's a comedian. He has earned that respect, and I've reached out to this guy. And it's, it took a few attempts, but I finally got him on the line. I'm, I'm very excited <laughs> about this interview. Anytime you're in, uh, interviewing somebody who has legacy tied to NWA, just anybody in that realm, you have nothing but respect and, and love for a guy like a TK Kirkland. How are you doing, sir? What's going on, family? How you doing? You good? I am good. I'm excited for this interview, sir, and I'm ready to talk about a lot of things. We're going to do this interview. We're going to base it around your podcast. So if okay. You so if you don't mind, I want to kind of talk about your past, how you got to this point. Yes. And, and then I want to ask a few questions. I have a nice little game to play with you, if you don't okay. mind. It's, okay. it's, it's either who raised you or did TK raise you, all right? So we'll okay. get to all that right. toward the end. It's pretty all cool. Right. But uh, first and foremost, um, how are you doing? How are you doing? Life is good. You know, life is spectacular. I can't complain. Are you on the road right now? We, we, I'm we, always on the road. Always on the road? Always traveling. Um, I was just checking out a, a recent Breakfast Club interview, and I was told, when I was li looking at the interview, and I was seeing that you have your name, a street name after you right now? Well, I don't have it yet. It, okay. it goes down February 25th is the ceremony. February 25th, and this is in Brooklyn? No, it's in Jersey City, New Jersey. Jersey City, New Jersey. Yeah. How does this feel for you? This honor, just having your hard work paying off. What does this feel? Well, you know, it's, a, it's an exciting thing, you know. Um, as we get close to the date, I get nervous and nervous because uh -huh. it's like a, um, a true, true blessing. You know, but it's, my, me getting the street isn't really based on my career. It's part of my career, but it's really because I've been arrested over 14 times. And okay. let me explain to you what I mean. Okay. Um, a lady explained it to me best. She said, every person is born with a destiny. And because I veered off my path and I made it back is the reason why I'm getting a street named after me. Because it's telling people that you can pretty much mess up three quarters of your life and still find time to win. And they felt that the street was important because we wanted to show Afro-American men and women. This is strictly for Afro-American women and men, especially in Jersey City and around the world, that you can mess up your life and still get back on track. And this is why I have a street name after me next year. I'm having a scholarship and a school named after me. So it's a, it's a, it's a true honor. How have you been able to sustain success, still touring? What have you been on the road for 20, 25 years now? How have you been able to? Um, 30 years. 30 years. Let me 30 get years. that right. Let me put some respect yes. on your name. Yes. How have you been able to just sustain success, not let the acts get old? How have you just been able to just keep it flavorful, if I could say? Um, I, I, it has to be, it's part of your DNA. It's part of your personality. Uh -huh. It's part of knowing who you are, you know. Like I said, everybody has their own personality. Everybody has their own journey. My journey has led me to where I am, you know. And um, it, I just find things funny, and I make it funny, and I've been able to just be myself for years. And I just thank God for people like you, um, Charlemagne the guy, Noriega with Drink Champs, mm -hmm. all these people that have done things for me over the last year or so. Um, how it changed my life in a sense because I really wanted everyone to know who I was. Mm -hmm. But when Def Jam put a lot of false prophets in the game who was successful because I was successful more before a lot of people blew up. So when Def Jam went commercial and it put a lot of people on, these people was kind of haters. They was kind of not trying to get me to shine because I was still in the street doing my thing. But when we got on that mic, I was destroying everybody. So the comeback, and, uh, and I'm so thankful to social media because you young heads is looking for a real dude to talk because no one's never taken the time to give you guys game, to give no. you knowledge, to make you a better person. And I've always been like that since day one. Like I wanted to bring 
I was the Jay Z and the Puffies before they were. And mm-hmm. I wanted to do that in the comedy game. But in the comedy game, most comedians are haters or um, they want to just go their own path. So I did it for a while. I managed a lot of people and then I fell back. And it's just a great opportunity now to do what I need to do. And I might get back into management, but right now I'm just focusing on me for a minute. Now, you brought up Charlemagne and you, you talk about Charlemagne and Taxstone. Is it true that these were two of the guys that even helped you come up with the idea for a podcast? Well, it was really Charlemagne. Okay. I just show love to Tax because they have been trying to get me and Tax on the podcast for over a year. But my schedule was so busy. Mm-hmm. All I kept hearing, you got to do this with Tax. You got to do this with Tax. And I didn't know who Tax was. And then when me and him hooked up, we just, it was just we just just blended together. Mm-hmm. And I just wish I could have got with him a little sooner because I think I could have prevented his situation. We're praying for Tax and hopefully he gets out of his situation. Um, now I'm going to read you some headlines, right? I'm going to read okay. you a few headlines. You've already always been opinionated. And you've always had a dope perspective. Right. On, on just things, not just even comedy. All right. Okay. Donald Trump's trying to ban Muslims. What is your opinion on his presidency thus far? It's, a, it's a, Donald Trump's presidency, I have an effect on so many levels. One, from a street perspective, you really got to respect the man. Because the man pull off the coldest hustles. That's like putting on a ski mask, going in the bank, and pulling off a robbery and walking out. You think he was going to get just um, 20000 and you got lucky and walked out of that motherfucker with $4.5 million. Seriously, he really that, did. Yeah. That's how that is from a street perspective. On an intellectual level, on an intellectual level, it's bad in so many ways. Because on some things, Donald Trump is right. Mm-hmm. It's just that his ego... And his personality is just so horrible that you hate to deal with him because he's so egotistical. He's, he's, he's very arrogant. And if you took that away from him and he was able to explain himself that people could understand, you would truly respect some of the things that he was doing. The Muslim thing is something personal. We don't know what that is yet. Mm-hmm. It's something personal. And the thing about a person who was self-destruct I see all these people complain about Donald Trump, but what I've learned in life is that if you just sit back, fall back, a motherfucker like that will destroy himself. So all you got to do is just watch it. Don't even, you ain't even got to complain no more. Men like that self-destruct and he's going to self-destruct. He's going to run into the same wall he's talking about. He's going to run into a brick wall. wall. He's going to run into a brick wall. Trust me when I tell you. We'll be talking about this interview four years from now. And you was like, T.K. Kirkland was right. And you make sure you pull this up. He's going to run. He's going to self-destruct. I swear. You see him and his wife don't even get along. She's not even at the White House. Is he even he's, at the White House? Half she's not time? even at the White House. She wow. at the, whole, she at the, um, the, the place in New York City. The hotel, right? The hotel. Yeah. Now, in a situation like this, with you being a comedian... I, well, I can't even say now. There used to be no holds barred when you step in and, and, and just you could be yourself with your people. You see people like Kanye West meeting with him. You see people like Steve Harvey, who's respected. I have nothing but respect for Steve Harvey. Like, I got respect for you because I've seen uh-huh. him do a lot of good with brothers, especially brothers of African-American descent, bringing them in, talking to them and everything like that. Single parent, sometimes no parent. Do you talk about them in your company? Can you join at them a little bit and make jokes about them? I don't really talk about them. The thing about being a man is you let some men just do their thing. Mm. Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey is just doing his thing and he's focused on himself. So when a man's focused on himself, you you have to respect that he has his own agenda. And when a man has his own agenda, you just pretty much have to just, you know, ride the wave. We can't speak for him. The same thing with Kanye West. Kanye is on his own thing. And we want them to be, we want men like that to be thoughtful of the Afro-American man. But we live in a world today that nobody gives a fuck about nobody but themselves, yo. Very true. Very true. Nobody cares about nobody but themselves. And at the end of the day, when you go to the bank, nobody asks you, did you help anybody? They just take your money and you make a deposit. So it is what it is. I'm going to try to do my little part on this urban 
take a lot of you young people under the wing, drop knowledge every Monday on my show, mm -hmm. the TK Kirkwood show, because I see that half the world is just thirsty for knowledge. I'm really sorry that your parents didn't take y'all under your wing and just give you knowledge. But if you've you never met your father, never met your mom, that means your mother probably was a hoe back <laughs> in the day and she didn't um, manage her pussy properly to fuck with the right dude. <laughs> or your dad was slinging dick and just nothing in any bitch he saw. You know, because she had a fat ass at the bar in the club, but not no, not realizing this bitch is not a good mother <laughs> to raise a child. It's so fucked up out here, yo. It's, so it's crazy, up. and it's going to get crazy. So, some of the stories I've seen from people in my... Yes. I'm 20, I'll am be 23 in four days. Some yes. of the people that I see around me and thinking that these are the people that's going to have these crazy stories in 20 years from now from about their yeah. parents... How they parents was hoes and thotting and bobbing out here is crazy, right. Mr. Kirk. Yeah, because everybody fucking, see, there's no rule to fucking. See, if, it, if I was president, I, everybody would have a card. You would have to card the fucking. A man would have to have $7,000 in his account to get some pussy. And a bitch would have to have $11,000 in her account. What? And the reason why a woman has to have more money because the nigga might die or leave a bitch. So I need the woman to have her money caked up just in case a nigga leave. Because everybody just fucking everybody and nobody doing their due diligence. Before we, we're gonna get right into that in the pot in the podcast and everything, and we're gonna talk uh -huh. about TK Kirkland's new podcast that he has out right now. In a sec, I gotta ask you these two questions just because I'm I'm into knowing about my history and you have some history, I believe, with Easy E. Could you explain the connection with Easy E and just the whole NWA with you and your life? Well, the thing about Easy E, I'm you know, I'm a young kid from Jersey City, New Jersey. I went to Arizona State. After Arizona State, I went to Cal State Northridge and worked on my master's degree. Um, it's strange what happened to me in my life. I had a huge fight with Charlie Murphy in his house. Well, not in his house. I stole his Rolex. I've heard this, and too. They, they found out about it. We got into a fight. And somehow, some way, I turned the negative into a positive. Started doing stand-up comedy. Two years later, or three years later, um, I'm, I'm phenomenal. I'm, I'm burning up the stage. So I'm at a concert with um, Bobby Brown and Tina Marie. And Rick J um, um, Easy E walks in. I didn't even know who he was. I just saw a little nigga with a jerry curl and a windbreaker. And he put a song in at an 18,000 seat. And the song was We Want Easy. And I was like, who is that? And the guy was telling me that that was the dude right there. So back then, I believed in myself so much. I used to just walk up to people or find out where their numbers was or find out what club they were in. And say, hey, you need to let me open up for you. I did this with NWA. I did this with Jay-Z's. I did this with Teddy Riley and Guy. And then once you start making relationships, then I started going on tour with Frankie Beverly and Mays. I did shows with the Spinners. I did shows with the Whispers. I've done shows with the Manhattans. I've done shows with um, Mary J. Blige, um, um, Patti LaBelle, um, Second and None, AMG, Bitch Better Have My Money. Um, DJ Quick, Tupac, um, the list goes on, you know, that I think this year I'm going to shoot for the Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the MC Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You no should comic, be in. No comic has ever done what I've done. You I've should be in. Yes, As sir. you should. As yeah. you should. Yeah. You brought up Bobby Brown. Have you been able to check out this new edition film? Say it again. You bought up Bobby Brown. Did you get to check out any of the new edition biopic? Yeah, I thought it was good. And, and the crazy thing about um, Bobby Brown and them, I, used to, I, I was there opening act two back in the day. So we all used to stay at this building on Franklin Avenue in Hollywood because the music label would put them up in a certain um, hotel room. On, it was Franklin Plaza, true story. Mm -hmm. And I was staying with a gentleman named David Jones who was a friend of Eddie Murphy's. So that's how I got to meet the Stevie Wonders and all that type of shit and, and, and the rest of history. Even one of my great stories, too, is um, Naughty by Nature. When Naughty by Nature um, came out on tour, I was there opening act as well. Wow. Wow. Yes, it's, so, it's so great, Mr. Kirkland, that you have a podcast because, like Nori, I feel like you and him are two people who have all these incredible... Can I get Go back? ahead. I'm listening. I'm texting somebody. I, I need your face, though, Mr. Kirkland. I need you. I'm sorry. Okay, keep going. It's, we're keeping it real. Yeah. Nigga doing, I'm, I'm texting one of my babies. 
I feel like you and Nori, y'all stories are, y'all have so many hip hop stories. I feel like this is why it's great for you to have a podcast. I, I, that's why I think it's great. Do you feel as if though this podcast will allow you to tell some of these stories? Are you strictly sticking to helping brothers and helping ladies in their situations? I'm going to do it all. Okay. You know, I'm only in my third week. You know, we got time. Mm -hmm. There's a big world out there and God willing, we have so many weeks. So hopefully that we can um, create something really, really good together because my podcast is the people's podcast. Mm -hmm. It's when I blow up, we all going to win because I'm, I'm just that type of dude. I'm that type of dude. Like I believe in helping people. I want to see other people win, but it has to be at my pace so I don't go crazy or lose my mind. So if I tell you something today, I may not get to it to two weeks because I got other things as priority. And I just want to take my time so I don't feel pressured. I don't like to feel pressured. You're, you're two weeks in. I've checked out both episodes. I checked out the one with tax, of course. And I checked out like a mini 15-minute one, I believe, which was week two. Yeah, I have, a, I have a reason why I do 15 minutes. Okay. And they're going to get longer, but I wanted to just test the waters. And two, what I want to tell the people, I'm a busy motherfucker. I ain't got time to be sitting in no damn um, studio no hour, two hours, trying to give motherfuckers knowledge that they should have learned from their parents. So the reason why you get been getting 15 minutes is because I'm busy. A nigga got to catch a fucking plane and do things. I'm not going to sit there all day, drink water and juice and alcohol, trying to give niggas knowledge. They, they talk about, oh, he the jewel dropper. He the gem dropper. Oh, I've, I've learned so much from you in such a little time. Oh, that's motherfucking great. <laughs> if you can't get this shit every week in 15 minutes, that's your own motherfucking problem. Call your parents up and call them and say, Mom, Dad, y'all ain't shit. I'm 40-something years old, 20-something years old. I ain't learned the motherfucking thing. Hey, TK, hold on now. You just made me think about something. If I call you, I'm scared you're going to clown me more than you're going to help me. Are you really going to be helping these brothers out here, these pathetic brothers out here? You, you know what? <laughs> you have to take that chance when you pick up that motherfucking phone. If you say some stupid shit, I'm going to get in your ass. So you better have your man pants on and, 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 and your fist ball because it's a lot of weak niggas out here in the world. And I got to make I got to give them a spine. Are you pro speaking of weak niggas? Are you pro D, the DM world or are you more of a you got to go pick up, go to a lady and talk to her and pick her up in person? Oh, yeah. You got to pick a woman up. You can't you do the DM. You wouldn't dare do the DM. You mean di um, direct message? Yes, sir. You got to do it all. Do it all. Okay. You got to do it all. You got to DM, and then once they answer, hopefully they're interested in you. Then you, if you, if they in your neighborhood, you go pick them up. You know, hopefully you got a car. You can't do the bus. You can't get on the motherfucking bus and pick the female up. So you got to open the car. And, and, and men who money ain't right, if you ain't got, like I said, if you ain't got five, $6,000 in the bank, leave a female alone. <laughs> Don't don't even walk up to her and waste some motherfucking time. You gotta have a little bit of change. You gotta be able to take a woman to a movie. You gotta be able to buy a young lady a nice little gift. And you wanna be able to take little trips, you know. You're not big mm -hmm. trips, you know. You, you wanna take fucking a little trip. So if you you ain't got six, seven thousand dollars in the bank, leave her alone. Now, Mr. Kirkland, I shot my shot at my girl. I had her for about this it's been about a year now. When right. 2016 hit. I said, look, I'm just shooting my shot at this one. I was in college. I was about to graduate my last semester last last year, last January, around this time. Right. And I shot my shot. All right. So you're for shooting your shot. I, after that, I had to take out like six, seven times before right. you just gave me the time of day. You forced shooting your shot as long as you can back it up in person. Right? I shot it in person, but then it just took a lot of texts and communicating, dates, everything. Yeah, some, some women are like that. And sometimes you could be so smooth. Mm -hmm. a, a female will fuck you on the first night and you can live happily ever after. <laughs> I tell females that if you got it going on, you like the nigga that you kick it with, just make sure you do your homework on the nigga mm -hmm. and fuck him on the first date. You know, sometimes you got to fuck a nigga on the first date so good that if a nigga even thought about not fucking with you no more, that nigga got to be like, you know what? Hell, motherfucker, nah. I'm keeping her. But you then you got to also be careful that you fuck a nigga so good, you bring the bitch out of him. And what uh, I mean by the bitch out of him, some guys don't like a woman looking at another nigga or why are you wearing that tight skirt? If you ever hear a man say, take that off, or who you on the phone with, 
or he trying to check your phone, you got to leave that. That nigga kill everybody in the family. Leave that nigga alone. <laughs> so a relationship, you believe a, a dude could be with a, a chick and a chick could be with a guy if they fuck on the first day? Oh, absolutely. I've done it. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, Mr. Kirkman. I don't no, know. No, it's, it's, all, it's all your mental. Okay. See, most of you guys think because a girl fucked you on the first day, she a hoe. She ain't a hoe. That's her pussy. She just knew what she wanted. Yeah, she could do what the fuck she wanted. If she, if she chose to give it to you, be think of, think highly of yourself that you like, man, she fucked me. I'm grateful. See, a lot of you young motherfuckers are not grateful. You don't get pussy every day like how we used to get pussy back in the day. 100%. So if a girl fucked you on the first day, yo, you got to enjoy that shit and be thankful. Okay. What's the craziest question you've been asked on your podcast, the TK Kirkland podcast so far? Nothing so far. Nothing I'm so quite sure it's coming. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna play a game. We got about five questions in the game, and then we'll. Uh huh. Yeah. The game is TK Kirkland raised you, or who raised you? All right. Okay, I like that. That was a terrible attempt to be you, but it's okay. what I got. All right. Okay. If 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 you if you rock with how to do, and with Valentine's next day next week, we're gonna kind of just center these questions around Valentine's Day. If the if you like what the dude did, TK raised you. If you don't like what he did. Who in the hell raised you? Right. So right. I'll read these scenarios to you. Okay, here's, go ahead. Here's scenario one. A guy's interested in a chick. He's never got the box and got past the friendship level. He takes her to dinner on Valentine's Day because she's lonely, has nobody else to go with, spends over. Now, you know, you're getting real money. So kind of narrow this down to somebody like me. He okay. spends over $100 on dinner. Uh-huh. Is that a TK raised you or who raised you? With a friend, he never got out of the friend zone. She was just lonely. He said, "Hey, I'll just." So what is what is he? What do you? What are we complaining about? He's him spending a hundred dollars, or it's, he's trying to fuck her afterwards. It's it's him being in the friend zone. Never, she, this girl ain't never showed him interest a day in his life, and he just decided to take out. Is that a TK raised you or who raised you? No, that's a TK raised. TK raised you. Why? I like for men, I like for men to be gentlemen. Okay. Okay. You know, and 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 sometimes you ain't gotta fuck everybody you meet. You know, 100%. sometimes sometimes God give you a pass, you treat someone good, and the next time you fuck around and get somebody, you like, oh, I see why I got her, because you know you build up your point system. Okay. All right. Next question: A guy flies out a girl that he's been talking to for a couple months. They're a little bit past casual dating. When she gets to the hotel, she remembers that she forgot to tell him that she's on her period. Right. He kicks her out and doesn't even pay for the Uber. Is that a TK raised you or who raised you? Who raised you? Why is it who raised you? Because you, you got at the end of the day, you got to be a man. At okay. the end of the day, you know, you can't help if a woman's on a period. And keep it in 100, sometimes if you're smooth enough, you can fuck a girl on a period. But you young guys um, would never attempt no shit like that. I did see, that. I did that. I'm but, there. I'm okay, there. see, you're keeping it real. Sometimes I'm there. you can I'm fuck there. a girl on a period. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You just yeah, got to... You just got to make sure you lay a towel down on the sheet, uh -huh. right? Lay a towel down because what happens is that if the girl is bleeding heavily, that shit will sink through the, the sheets, the um, um, the mattress cover, and get on the mattress. And if you had a five-star hotel, they'll send you a bill for the mattress. Yeah, 100%. I, I, that, that shit happened to me at the Ritz-Carlton years ago, <laughs> and I got a bill for $1,000 for a mattress. <laughs> Next question, Mr. Kirkland. I can't afford no damn rich car. I don't even know what it is. I, I can't get there. A guy hooks up with his partner's girl, all right? Uh -huh. This is one month after the, the him and the girl stopped talking. He said, look, we was just smashing. It was nothing serious. The, the dude who's getting with the girl now, he posts a picture of the girl on Valentine's Day and celebrates them being together. Is that a who raised you or the TK raised you? Say the question one more time. I got you. So a guy, he's talking to his partner. It's a chick that his partner used to rock with. His partner say, look, we good. We was just smashing. I smashed her a lot of times. I smutted it out. But the, the friend, he talks to the girl. He thinks it's cool because the guy's like, I'm not really into the girl. Right. And he now gets the girl. And on Valentine's Day, he posts her first, his first picture with the chick. Is that a TK raised you or who raised you? So are you saying something wrong that he posted? Is it is it wrong because he 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 posting a picture of a girl that his partner said he smutted out? But it all depends on what he's saying when he's put up the picture. If he's putting up the picture saying that this is my love and I'm lover, mm -hmm. or is he putting up the picture saying this bitch ain't shit? My boy fucked her. 
and I'm fucking a No, chick. this is a I like I'm I'm rocking with this chick. This is I'm oh, rocking yeah, with. Yeah, he's in love with her. It's a TK, it's a TK, it's a TK range to record. It's like a Kanye West. Do you understand <laughs> how strong a Kanye West got to be knowing that about 30 niggas fucked his wife? Oh man. You know how strong that ni- that's why the nigga going crazy is catching up to him. This nigga oh. goes to sleep knowing that about uh, um Reggie 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 White fucked Reggie him Bush. basketball. Reggie Reg- Bush fucked her. Ray J on camera. Yeah, yeah, Ray J. Nigga, that's <laughs> that, I don't give a fuck. That that'll hurt your feelings. <laughs> It'll make you lose your mind. And y'all think Kanye care what y'all got to say about him? That brother's so strong mentally on the inside. No, we think he's strong. That nigga ain't strong. He play. <laughs> see, I, I read between Kanye. Where's Kanye? West playing Kim Kardashian? You know, and I started what? reading something. Even at the house that they building, she's been spending more money than he's been putting up. Mm. So it's just like you know, he playing her. It's gonna you come out so? of the box. He playing her. He playing her to the T. All right, I got two more here. A guy buys his girl, they've been together for three years, a car for Valentine's Day. This happens two months after he found her cheating on Christmas. Now, the the chick apologized and said, I'm a new person. I'm changed. Is this a TK raised you or who raised you? Hmm. It all depends on where you are in your life. So I would say... Me now to be a, a TK who a TK raised you. Okay. But years ago, I probably said who raised you because <laughs> I believe that once trust is broken, you gotta let the bitch go. I hear you, and I agree with that one hundred percent. You gotta let her go. It's just a, because no man or woman should put themselves through that type of torture. Every time your girl or guy walks out that door, you don't know if they're gonna see another guy or another girl. No one wants to live like that. <laughs> All right, I'm setting you up here just to plug yourself real quick. Okay. Last one of these. A guy has a a main chick and a chick on the side. All right. He lies to the main chick, tells her he's away on business to take his side chick to a T.K. Kirkland comedy show for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Is that a T.K.? and, And the camera gets on them. All right. I don't know if you have cameras at all your shows. And, right, I know what you mean. And he gets caught up. Right. And, and now he looks crazy. It got posted to one of the friends and caught up. Is that a TK <laughs> raised your mistake? Or is that a, oh, I'm sorry, TK raised you or is that a who raised your mistake? That's a who raised you. Because <laughs> a true player know you got to dot your I's and cross your T's. Uh-huh. And I tell men, if you do cheat, if you do cheat, because some of us do cheat. Yeah. You can't have a bitch in the same city. Mm. You got to be able to go to a club, go to a restaurant and be comfortable and not look over your shoulder, not worrying about if somebody's going to see you. See, because most guys who think they play as they're bringing their girl to the they main girl to the same place they bring their side bitch. Mm. So when you come in, you the, the people in there don't have respect for your girl, your, your main chick. Cause they know you bring the side bitch in here all the time, <laughs> so you disrespecting her. If you're gonna be a player, at least don't, don't dis- disrespect your main bitch. TK, I'm we at that 30 minute threshold. That's what my time is telling me. I didn't want to keep you more than that, and I want to save some of this good content for your show as well. I think you might be on to something. I don't know. Maybe you can tweak it a little bit, but I was kind of lobbing you this TK raised your who raised your segment. I like it. <laughs> and matter of fact, I'm gonna have you write for it. I'm gonna put it right here. So start putting segments together. I got I you. Need one for um. Friday, and okay. I'll start airing it um, on Monday. Okay, I, I definitely will do that. Um, first right. of all, thank you for your time, and if you want to plug the show one more time. And if yeah, you- everybody, make sure you check out the T.K. Kirkland show. Um, what can I tell you? It's, it's the drool dropper. It's the gym uh, man. It's the leg spreader. It's the nigga who keep it real 100%. Every Monday, the T.K. Kirkland show. Thank you for making me the number two podcast in the world. As of go, last week. And you guys can week. go check that out on Loudspeakers Network. You can type in TK Kirkland on iTunes. You can go check it out on the YouTube channel. There's many different ways to check out Mr. Kirkland in this show. And are you you any are you doing a show tomorrow or do you what you want to play? Yes, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia at okay. the Atlanta Theater. Um it's on um Jimmy Carter Highway, so just Google it because I don't have it in front of me. But tomorrow night through um really Valentine's Day. I got oh, a show every day. 
So we sold out pretty much. And if you're going to come through, just come through and follow me on Instagram mm-hmm. at TK underscore Kirkland. For the people who don't know how to spell Kirkland, because some people don't know how to spell it, it's K I R K L A N D. And when we get off the phone, I'll send you the topic that I'm doing for this Monday so you can start writing. You heard it first. I got my man writing for the TK Kirkland show. And this is how we change people's lives starting the day. TK Kirkland is Mr. Telefero. Thank you, man, for this support. My one of, I'm about to ask him a question. Matter of fact, we'll get in with this question. Yes, Mr. sir. Kirkland, will you be? I'm I'm in dire need. I've been trying to reach out to uh Charlemagne as well. I got tons of interviews. I've been making a lot of history. You two yes. are about two hours away from me right now. I'm here in Knoxville. I'm out of like Knoxville, Memphis, and Atlanta. Will you be my OG, sir? No. <laughs> oh. Hell motherfucking no. <laughs> but I will. I will be a friend. Okay. Meaning you could call me every now and then. OG, I got too much to do, family. I hear you. I got I too much to do. But the great thing about it, you have my personal number. Mm-hmm. Whenever, and we're going to talk every week anyway because you're going to be writing for me. I hear you, 100%. You know what I'm saying? So it's not an OG. We friends. I got you. I got we you. Friends, was, I shot my shot just like I got my girl last year. I told you I was shooting shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we I gotta do we gotta friends. Do. Fuck OG. <laughs> OG is like another word for counselor. You know, we friends. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kirkland, thank you for the time. We out. All right, real quick, it's yours truly, Mr. Telefero. Before the video starts, it will mean the world to me if you follow me on Twitter, Instagram. That's how my business grows. At is Mr. Telefero on your screen right now. When you follow and subscribe to me, you become one of the Pharaohs. That's how I talk business, and that's how you support a young hustler out here getting it.